I am that I am. Thank you for the word we have heard so far. Breathe upon this word. Let this impact someone's life for time and eternity. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hands and take your seat for one minute. Hallelujah. I know we have had a very intensive word. Even though I'm fully prepared, but I think you have had enough. Can we just go? Do you still have time? Because I saw one or two people just going out, on, especially from the gallery, just one or two, not all of them. You saw them, right? Just some of you on the gallery. We have been in a hurry all our lives and a hurry to achieve nothing. <laughs> huh? You carry back from church. They are talking of marriage. You are talking of you are t- trusting God for husband. You carry back. Right? And then you went to take taxi to go home to nothing. Why not for one sit down? See, even if it is video, let this matter be handled. Someone today is that day you have been waiting for. So do we have a little time? Take your seat. We thank you, Master, for tonight. In Jesus' name. Whenever Dr. Mr. Nature preaches on marriage, at times I tell her, I think you are very hard on the women. They should submit themselves. And, and there are some women that they have done all that you said, but the man is too brutal. See, the man is the man is too brutal. It's not even aware that a human being is there. Let alone notice the submission. Then we realize. Let the man do her own. Let the woman do her own. And leave the results in the hands of God. Hallelujah. When you give me the opportunity, I deal with the men very well. <laughs> just, just the way that she deals with the women very well. But there is a balance. Tonight we are going to go to that scripture again. As it is typical. Since we are preaching on the same subject. She almost preached the things I wanted to preach. But I forgive her. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 to 32. Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Why submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to, unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought the men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth not his wife, loveth Sorry. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And then verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that he reverence her husband. Very quickly, marital and family roles. Marital and family roles. And then in bracket, we are also dealing with courtship rules. Marital and family roles. Our objective is to define the roles for husbands and wives. First objective. And the second objective is to define rules for singles. Roles for husbands and wives. And rules for singles. It is important to know by way of introduction that guidelines are the guarantee for success. Guidelines. People can fail exams not because they didn't know the subject, but at times they didn't follow the guidelines. There are some exams in multiple choice questions or objectives where they say shade the correct answer. Some some people tick the answer. They got the answer, but they didn't follow the guidelines, so they failed. Also, it is important to know that guidelines prevent accidents in life and destiny. Accidents. If you are walking on a bridge, let's say a pedestrian bridge or something like that, you will see rails left and right. It's not as if they are not aware that people are not seeing that it's a bridge and they could fall over. But the rails are put there to avoid accidents. Thirdly, it is important to know that it is rules that make for rulers. Rules make for rulers. Please let me use this one. Just be able to be. That is why prisoners, ex-convicts don't contest election. Rule breakers can never end as rulers. Now, the next thing we must know is that people don't fail because they are bad people. Or because they don't have good intentions. There are people who may, have, who may fail in marriage or fail in one thing or the other. Not that they are bad, they are bad. Not that the man is bad. Not that the woman is a bad woman. Or not that they don't have good intentions. There's nobody who went into marriage with the purpose of failing. But people can fail when guidelines are ignored. People can fail when rules are ignored. Even a professional athlete, if he ignores rules, he fails, he's disqualified. And finally, by way of introduction, when responsibility is defined and accepted, success is inevitable. When responsibility is defined and accepted, success is inevitable. That is why we are here to define what is the role of the husband, what is the role of the wife. Like the woman of God said, the scripture addressed the man far more than the woman. That was why I believe that when man fell in the garden, God didn't look for Eve to ask what happened. Am I communicating at all? Eve 
Eve. It was not Adam that had direct communication with the serpent. It was Eve. But God was not going to look for Eve. He looked for Adam. Because as far as God was concerned, the thing spoiled under his watch. And as John Maxwell said, everything rises and falls on leadership. So, we have so many instructions for the man, and that is why the man must make up his mind to rise up to the responsibility. That's why she was telling you that when we talk, I say, look, let the man do well. Let the man do well, the home will do well. So what are the roles for the husband? Number one is direction. We already heard that. The man is the head of the home, so he has direction, spiritual direction, visionary direction. A man is only qualified to be followed when he knows where he is going. Direction, visionary direction. A person who doesn't know where he is going is not qualified to be followed. I handled a case not too long ago where a young lady was brought to me. Wedding was like a week or two weeks time and she said she wouldn't marry. And they wanted me to talk to her and probably convince her and so on and so forth. And I was talking with her. And she told me, she said, look, I don't understand the whole process. She said, I'm not even sure of what we are doing. He said, for example, I am living somewhere and the man is living in another place, two different countries that may take you up to 10 to 11 hours flight. He said, for example, we have not identified where are we going to live after the wedding. The man is not willing to live where she is and she is not willing to come where the man is. Then she said, what is the use? Direction. The stronger direction you provide, the stronger the followership you command. Your respect increases when your wife knows that you know where you are going. When the person you are marrying knows that you know what you are doing with your life. For the sake of time, I will rush. Number two, affection. Which is love that is communicated by action. Husbands, love your wife. Affection. Love in action and in deed. How do you know that you love a person? Three ways. Many ways. Number one, it is your pleasure to spend time with them. Number two, you are almost addicted to their voice. You want to hear them. Number three, you are willing to give anything to communicate your love. That is, who is it that you love spending time with? Whose voice is it that excites you? And who are you willing to spend and be spent for? That is who you love. As it is in the physical, so it is with God. Love. Affection. You communicate it. It's communicated also in sacrifice. You are, you are ready to inconvenience yourself. You are ready to give up pleasure, give up comfort for your wife. And let nobody be deceived. Everybody knows who loves them. I love you, I love you, my wife, I love you. Wife, know whether you love her. Am I communicating at all? I heard the story of a, a woman who said the husband doesn't love her. And he brought the man of God and the man of God said, you don't love your wife. 
And the husband said, me? I don't love my wife. I just bought her Santana. You know Santana of those, the car they call Santana. I don't love you and I bought you Santana. And the woman looked at her and he said, it's not the Santana I want, I want you. You. When was the last time you had any meaningful time with me? When was the last time you said I love you to me? So I don't need the Santana, take it and give me you. The man of God said, tell your wife, I love you. He said, I love you and Santana, which is costlier. <laughs> That's a hard man, right? Too hard. Eventually said, I love you. And the woman started crying. Even, even whether he meant it or not. Or he, he, he just said, he said, women cannot differentiate at times. <laughs> he said, he loved me. I mean, you cannot live with a man who loves you and you are not aware. Love carries a climate. Love is an attitude with an atmosphere. When you step into the climate of love, you know, and when you step into the climate of hatred, you know. The atmosphere of love carries magnetic power. People want to hang around where love is, is found. And they run from where love is absent. Husbands, love your wife. And you are not the only person to confirm that you love your wife. It is your wife that will confirm that you love, you love her. Number two was affection. Number three is, let me call it sanitation. What he referred to as sanctification, and the Bible refers to as sanctification. Sanitation. Ensuring that godly, wifely, scriptural standards are attained. Ensuring that godly, wifely, scriptural standards are attained. Let me say this to every one of us. There is not any one of us who entered into marriage perfect. Everyone is project in progress. Project in progress. It is the scriptural duty of the man to wash the woman. But the emphasis is correction, not condemnation. Why if you are not to say to your husband, why are you picking up on me? No. It is correction, not condemnation. I hear stories where a man will sit his wife down for the next one hour, open the scripture and preach at her. See what the Bible says. He's talking directly about you. Say, so, madam, see. Read it yourself. Read it yourself. How is this passage different from how you have been behaving? He talks like that to the woman for the next one hour. He said, you better change your ways. I'll finish talking. <laughs> that is, the, you, you are raising a rebel. You are raising a rebel. Somebody who will wink the nose at you. After you turn your back, say, look at you. Carry Bible again and come and share with me. I, me too, I have Bible to show you. If I, if I show you your own, it's more than mine. <laughs> it is love. Like my wife told you, it is done in, in a climate of love. I said, you don't need to go to learn. Just, just, just straight to the point. It's in the climate of love. And I can say that godly husbands, can also be corrected by their wives in love. The way the man is to present himself, 
the wife he wants. In the same manner, the woman also is looking forward to the kind of husband he can be proud of. That was why scripture says, submitting yourselves one to another. So the, the man submits as well where necessary. Especially to constructive impute from the wife. Honey, I think that um, the way you talked in that meeting, maybe you should have said it like this. Um, I know what you said was all right, correct, but it could... Maybe how do you see saying it like this? This is very, very important if there is going to be a future. That is important. So, it is sanitation. Number four is what I call dignification. A glorious church. Present to himself a glorious church. Dignification or elevation. A, an assignment of the wife, as we heard already, is, of the husband, is the enhancement of the value of his wife. The enhancement of the quality of his wife, bringing out the best out of your wife. Two years down the line, three years down the road, people who know her should know that she is far better than who you married. Far better. Down the road. Let the wife reflect glory and reflect excellence. Where the home is doing well, the madam is shining. She becomes the envy of daughters. What did this woman do to get this kind of home? Very, very important. Don't ever forget that relationship requires workmanship. Relationship requires workmanship. You work at it to succeed. So your agenda is to bring out the best of your wife, not the worst. Don't turn her into a shadow of herself. I remember a lady, highly anointed in singing. I knew her as a single lady. Every time she sang, and I'm talking about maybe something like 32 years ago, atmosphere was powerful. She was singing like a teenager at that time, 12, 13 years old. Until she got married. And everything disappeared. Every single thing got married. I'm married for maybe 15 to 20 years and I didn't hear her sing once. Did not this girl have any voice at all? Again? That is why you must not marry anybody who will kill your destiny. Don't marry anybody who will bury your potential. Single sisters, young men, don't marry anybody who, will, who is the obituary of your destiny. Great potentials with zero expression equals massive depression. You heard me well. Great potentials with zero expression equals massive depression. Massive. If that lady was singing before you met her, then the singing just shifted to another level. If that man was a preacher before you met her, then the anointing just shifted to another level. Whatever they were before you met them, you shift them by your marriage. Every devil in hell is aware that my wife is a zillion times better than when I met her. To my notice, I didn't know that she ever saw one single vision before we met. Neither handed the microphone to preach anywhere to my notice. For she loved God. But as by the assimilation of association, but by the impartation of association, Life drastically upgraded. Anywhere they invite me in the world and I'm unable to go, she can comfortably step in. Minister. Lives will be changed. Healings will take place. Deliverances will happen. It wasn't like that. Somebody pulled her and upgraded her. And I am not intimidated by her profile. Because I did. There are some people who feel scared 
that their wives are running up or becoming somebody or is getting popular or getting everything and they are just angry. No, 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 no. If your wife is rising, that is your credit. You are doing well. You are, ay, 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 ay. You are doing well. You are doing well. You are doing very, very well. You are doing very, very well. They won't say which woman is this. They say whose wife is this. Am I communicating at all? Take your seat. Don't turn anybody into a shadow. That's the worst you can do to anybody's daughter. Marry them and useless them. Marry them and destroy their potentials. That is why you must keep your eyes open before you marry. That was number one. Number four. Number five is provision. It says that he may, he will cherish. In fact, nourish it and cherish it. The first one is nourish it. Provision. The husband's duty is to nourish, is to provide, is to invest in the life of his wife. People understand that the man is a provider. Everything shows that the man is a giver in the relationship. The woman will give, but the seed that produces a child came out of the man, given to the woman. Now, you see what scripture said in First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8? But if any provide not for his own, especially those of his own house, wife and children, he has denied the faith. And he is worse than an infidel, atheist. All right, give me as many translations as you want. But those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, he has denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. Go ahead. Because you can trivialize it. The wife comes to money, you are shouting. See what the Bible is saying. Anyone who neglects care for family members in need repudiates the faith. That is worse than refusing to believe in the first place. Good news translation. All right. But if any do not take care of their relatives, especially members of their own family, they have denied the faith and they are worse than an unbeliever. Can I ask you one question? One, just one question. An infidel, an unbeliever, when he dies, where is he going? A person who is worse than an unbeliever. Even though he comes to church, but he is worse than an unbeliever. He's worse than an atheist. He's an usher. He's a, he's a counselor. He's in the choir. He's protocol. He's traffic control. He's even a pastor. But he is worse than an unbeliever. Because he doesn't care for his wife and children. Where is he going? That's what I'm talking about. It is a shame for a man to be fully suited. And he's not aware of how his wife got the clothes he's wearing. It's a shame. You are, you are sharply dressed. And you like the tie and the suit. Or whatever you are wearing. And you, you are not aware. The clothes on the body of the children, you have no idea. When it is time to, for school fees, he is shouting. As if he traveled when the wife conceived. When it's time for feeding money, the woman is afraid to submit least. He's afraid. The food that he will eat. Say, madam, are you not on salary? I will give you money for the, for the, for the tour. You provide money for the soup. Let's, let's divide it. Let's divide it. 
the, 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 the money I will give you is the one you will use to buy apple, buy pounded yam, and the honor. And, and, and you will provide money for the food. Said, How can a man say that from his mouth? The thing awful. To go to heaven is not only <laughs> say I, I'm not, I, I don't smoke, I don't steal, I don't commit adultery. He said, if you can't care for your wife and your children, you are worse than the person who, who doesn't go to church. Wahala do. <laughs> For the matter of heaven, Wahala do. <laughs> it's not speaking to somebody here. Don't misunderstand me. There would be situations where the woman voluntarily makes her resources available. That is based on the agreement of the husband and wife. But to marry a woman because of what money she is earning is a shame. It's a shame. I, I, there was a situation where a young lady who lost her mother as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a little girl was brought up by her father and then her siblings, about four or five of them, the father brought them up single-handedly. This girl grew and got a very well-paying job. And then continued taking care of her juniors and her father. And then the man married her. And the man said, from this moment forward, if you send one naira to your father. What a useless man. What a year. From this moment forward, if you send one naira to your mother, one naira will start your father and your siblings, I will deal with you. The girl said, What? My mother died, my father brought me up and took it. Where were you? Since we are married, I have, I have not one day asked my wife, so how much do you have there? Can you bring it? Not that after I became a pastor, how much do you have there? Can you bring it please? Or what is your contribution to this month's feeding? Till today, he has money that God gives her from various sources. I am not aware. I am not interested. I am not aware. Neither am I interested. Maybe he went somewhere and then she ministered and they gave her up on a radio or whatever and said, I said, so... How much, did, how much were you giving? Drop it here. I am not aware. I am not interested. Yet on a monthly basis, she is on allowance from my pocket. And according to the goodness of her girlness, The money can be increased. Good girl, I increased your salary this month. You have done very well. Like we are saying, it's not a matter. It didn't start today. It started with 2,000 naira. 1,000, 5,000 a month. This is money for food. This is money for you. And what I am giving you, madam, must not cross into food money. What I'm giving you for yourself is not permitted to enter the food money. This is for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So God will bless me. He has no option. Because he has blessed me and is continuously blessing. Because my wife is benefiting from the blessing. My children, strangers that I don't know. So to bend down like this and say good morning, sir. It's not easy hard for her. There's no bone in the leg, sir. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I am not saying this to 
intimidate anybody. If, when, when you do the right thing, God takes you up and takes you from level to level to level to level to level. She told you, I used to buy the suya from the road. Suya of her, inside the vehicle. We used, I used to drive to go to bush market to buy food for the house with her. Anybody from Plateau State? I think that market, they call it Ghana Uri Market. Drive before the railway crossing. You branch inside. The yams there were very, very cheap. It was my uh, 30 minutes. It was my joy to drive there. Remember the Volvo we used to drive there. I will package you, go and price the yam and buy and put it in the boat. I'll drive back. Anointed man, oh. medical doctor. Some people, if you do such as a woman rapper, okay, see where the rapper took me to now. <laughs> I am even wearing rapper now. <laughs> Take your seat in the presence of I don't want anybody to feel bad. Because when you hear this kind of preaching, at times your, own, your inadequacy seems exposed. It's not for evil. It's not for evil. It's not for evil. Our aim in this teachings is not to put anybody down. And nobody should look down on a husband for any reason if some of these things are applicable. Just thank God for the opportunity of hearing it now. And then, and no matter how far you went in the wrong direction, a U-turn is possible. And it is never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to get it right. Now, traveling to my degree, and you came to Zaria and you took, and you, and you branched left. Started going towards Sokoto side. And you reached uh, Jiga, is it? No. Zamfara. And they say, oh, you are on Sokoto Road. They say, where are you doing? Say, my degree. And they say, which road? They say, Sokoto. They say, okay, let me just reach Sokoto. <laughs> you turn. Let me go. That is how it is. Protection. I'm sorry. Provision. Very, very important. Let, and and then let me add this point. It is possible for a woman... To be at a point where her inflow was more than that of the man is possible. That is, maybe she got a privilege, is working with a big oil company, a shell, or a, doing some big major work, and the man is still like maybe a civil servant, or doing personal business that is not so flourishing. It's possible. And by understanding, the woman and the man can join their resources together. To build their home and build their future. But this is very important. The money the man gives the woman from his pocket. If he gave her 50,000 and she is earning 5 million a month, that 50,000 carries more weight. I don't know if there is any sister here that can bear witness to that. Why? It came from husband. This one I sweated for it. This one love gave me. <laughs> so don't be deceived that oh my wife is already on a good salary. Or it's already working. No, 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 no. This is from husband. Husband. House band. The band that binds the house. This is from husband. She may not spend that one carelessly. Whatever she buys with that money, she notices it. She sees it. Anything she buys. There are some notes I write. I write my wife some notes. Till today I'm writing. You know, till today, I write her some very beautiful notes. I said, "So can I have the notes back?" He said, "For where?" I said, "No, I just gave you the notes." I said, "No, I'm going to put it somewhere where she'll be making reference to it." That is how women are. Babies at any age. Somebody getting something, say amen. Yeah. They are getting something, say louder, amen. Yeah. So, provision number six is protect. Was it number six? It's protection. It said, nourish it and cherish it. 
value, protect, protect. Wow. The time I gave myself has expired. Protection. You cherish her. You defend her as your own life. Defend her as your own body. Now, protection means shield your wife's husband. Don't expose her to attack. You know what I mean? Fight her battles. She has a spiritual battle. Take it up with her in, in intercession. Can I say this very wrong? Don't expose her to your relatives to butcher. One of the most stupid things a man will do is to take his wife and present, it, present her before her family to judge. See this woman, no? Oh. say which you must. The one I marry. That is his mother he's talking to. That is his senior brother he's talking to. His relationship. See that woman. And you expect them to say, Good woman. Good woman. Especially in some families. Especially those who thought that she came to snatch you from them. Especially those who thought that she has taken your, their place in your life. See this woman. See this woman. See this woman. You people, tell me what to do. And they say, what did the woman do? Send her to her father's house first. Let, her teach, let them teach her lesson for two months. You have started, you have, you have set the process in motion for the ruin of your home. You defend her. You are the one to steal them, shield her from them. When they want to talk carelessly, they don't go there. That's my personal affair. If there is an issue, I'm going to tackle it. If there is anything you don't understand, I'll handle it. But don't go there at all. Don't go near there. Am I speaking to somebody here? And your duty is to even endear her to them. God has used me to give some things to my relations. My relations. My mother, my wife was the permanent person giving her monthly allowance, monthly. My money, but she was the one sending it. And I deliberately did it. Give, mama, give. And my mother said, I have never seen such a daughter-in-law. Cry! What a girl. What a girl. Not knowing I'm the one sending the money, She is the one she is thanking. Permanently thanking her. Every time she needed something from me, it will go through her. If she wanted me to assist people, you say, talk to him or talk to him for me. Am I communicating? I'm giving people vehicles here and then she will give it to them. I say, and they will, they will look at me. So, it takes wisdom for a house to be built. Protect her. She may do wrong, but don't shout on her in public. Don't disgrace your wife before your friends, before your juniors, before her co workers, before household staff. Don't. To do that, your masculinity is in question, your manliness is in question. You shield her in the public and scold her in the private. In the public, it's all right. In the private, you say, that thing that you did, don't do that next time. You know, if I was any kind of man, I would have really lost my temper out there. You say, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. And your value increases. <laughs> say, madam, don't be disgracing me everywhere. Why do you talk like this now? Please, you people, sorry, please. I don't know, you just keep on disgracing me everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Where will this stop now? Please. And that is your wife you are talking to like that. In public. You are sowing a very terrible seed. Finally, number seven. I title it. Now, 
let me say, don't let your wife, let the safest place in the world for your wife be your presence. What did I say? The safest place for your wife in the world, let it be your presence. Hanging around you. And finally, connection. Social a man leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. Unbroken intimacy. Let no mortal be closer to you than your, fa- your wife. No mortal, no male or female is closer to you. That is the foundation for infidelity. That nobody is closer to you than your wife. Where you have a closer man or a closer woman and vice versa. Don't ever let third parties destroy your union. Third parties. No matter how close they have been before. And for some of us who have had lives in time past in terms of you had boyfriend that um, you almost married but you didn't marry. Or girlfriends you almost married but you didn't marry. Now you have married your wife or your husband. Don't think that those people are still not eyeing you. And don't think that those people will not be happy if you continue from where you stopped. Even though you are in the marital contest. So be careful. Be very, very careful. And let that man, it is your duty in our place, they say there is something like relationship where needle cannot pass through. That is how you are to be with your wife. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let me go to the wise rule very quickly. Dr. Mr. Nature spoke extensively. Number one is submission. That is recognizing, acknowledging the leadership of the man. That the man is your God-given authority, not your contemporary, not your subordinate. It's your, the God-given authority over your life. You receive his instruction with delight. Not that he instructs you and you are murmuring and grumbling and going to do it regardless. God made man in his image, all of us, but the, the let me call it, the, the ego, the, 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 the sovereignty part of God is deposited in man, the male. That is why no real man will stand an argument from his wife. No real man. Especially when the woman is trying to insist that she's correct. No real man. No real man, because there are different kinds of men. Am I communicating? And God studies people before he gives, he, he, he allocates them partners. Thank God for my wife's respect and submission and all that, but I don't know how I could have tolerated for one day a stubborn, rebellious woman. For one day, even half a day. I say, come, say, come where? What? <laughs> what? Was that a dream or physical? <laughs> no. No, no, no. It cannot happen in the dream. Not a thought of physical. But I dreamed that I said, you should come, you refused. You see? So it's very, very important so that you don't say your husband is a hard man. There is an authority dominating nature. Let him know that it is your pleasure to submit to him. Let him know. And I believe that when these things are done well, when the wife submits well, the man will love. And when the man loves well, the woman will submit. They are connected. They are connected. Let him know that it's your pleasure. Now, Dr. Mr. Nancy just told us, you see, it may be American style to, to call your husband. I, can you imagine my, my wife and say, Paul, Paul. Then I say, yes, hi, Becky. <laughs> it may be Oibo style. But it is not scriptural style. It's not scriptural style. First Peter chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. Look at what scripture said. It said, for after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, 
adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed husband, calling him Abi. Abi shows. Abi guy. Abi bubble. <laughs> that is my bubble man. Abi, Abi. Calling him Lord. This is scripture. Master. Superior. Where they are calling them, they might, John might. Four out of six marriages break in divorce. There are people who marry on Monday and divorce on Friday. So that it is white does not mean it is right. People think that everything from, a, from a Igbo land is correct. Foul. Do you know what I'm saying? There are those who are in their 15th marriage. Married, divorced, married, divorced. 15 times. Some 20 something. By all this uh, over oibonization. Met on Monday. Loved. Jack loved Jane. And went to court registry on Wednesday. Divorced on Saturday. And life continues. No. Submission. Understand that submission is not slavery. Submission will either I actually bring you distinction. It's not slavery. If anybody say you love your wife too much, you 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 you, you, you do so much for her, it is submission that brought it. Submission. Number two is contribution. That is the woman is to support. And contribute to the success of the man's life and effort. Support his vision. Find out areas of his life where you can make a difference. Assist him to become everything God wants him to be. Including praying for your husband. Interceding for him to make it to succeed. Don't, don't be a burden to any man. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Make up your mind to be a blessing in the life of that man, not a burden. Don't let your husband remember you only in connection with needs. Eh? Children's school fees. Money for feeding. Money for clothes. Money for this. Money for that. And the only thing he thinks about you is in those terms. No! Be a bottom bearer with him. Find out his passion. Find out his vision. And see to what extent you can contribute. Very, very important. Somebody say, I am not a burden. I am a blessing. And you might, there might be times when the man needs practical encouragement. Honey, it is well with you. And the devil is not in control. Even though your boss is harassing you, very soon you will become bigger than that that you are seeing. And so on. And then, number three is attention. Give him attention. The truth of the matter is that some men are actually grown up boys. And the need continues. Attention to his life needs. Immediate and consistent. Nothing is as frustrating to a man has been, like, hear this now. At times a man may come back from, from, from work. Something is on his mind. He is eager to talk to his wife. His countenance is eager to speak. And then the wife rushes at him and says, so the, uh, 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 they just sent from the village now that um, uh, your, your father needs need some immediate urgent attention and also my mother sent to me as well then our child in school in fact what the, the teacher told me from school today is not correct at all uh, and also in, in the shop where we are selling one woman is looking for my trouble <laughs> it's 
Somebody, somebody is wondering whether that is possible, whether on a computer. Women at times can have pressure of speech. <laughs> pressure to speak. And here is the man. One, one thing to talk to his wife, what is on his heart. To receive some level of... You see, there are times where you don't need answer from people. You just want them to hear you. And what he gets is more burden on himself. When we live selfishly, we live stupidly. Please take your seat. When we live selfishly, we live, we live wastefully. The way the woman of God was telling us just now that the man should look out for the, what the woman is, is after in the same manner. Look out for what is on the man's mind. How many of you know that statistics show that women outlive men. How many of you know that? In, in, in most probability, if you go to your village, there are women who are alive whose husbands have gone since. Am I communicating? Widows, more than most times widowers, especially in the elderly state. Most times, the men are bottling up things that they have nobody to talk to. And the wife is not, is available only for school fees, food money. Let us save the male seed. Because the devil is after the male seed. Woman, do your best to save your wife from bottled up burdens. Am I communicating? And finally, number four. You see, the majority of the work was told to the men. Number four is appreciation. God made man in his image. God likes to be valued and appreciated. Communicate your value of your husband to him. Communicate your gratitude. Communicate your value. I am happy I'm married to you. Thank you for loving me and loving our children. I love and respect you. If I have another opportunity, I will marry you again. That is if it is true. <laughs> because, because there are some it's not true <laughs> so if I had an opportunity I'd dodge things <laughs> but no matter the situation communicate your value communicate your value to your husband don't compare him with other men and don't despise or talk down on him this money he is bringing, thank him for it. Am I communicating? Don't consider it as your right. Hello? He paid house rent. He paid children's school fees. He gave you food money. He bought you clothes. Don't say it is his duty, he must do it. If you think so, ask your age mate who is not yet married, who paid her house rent. If you think it's your right, ask your primary schoolmate who has not yet married, who is buying her cloth. You think it's your right? Ask who is paying the feeding bills of your university girl classmate. Who is doing that for her? And God helped you not to be in that situation. And you are saying it is his right. It is your right. No. Nothing communicates profit like value. Anywhere profit must be experienced, value must be expressed. It is the expression of value that, is equal, that equals the communication of profit. Honey, I'm very grateful. You paid the children's school fees without complaining. You are feeding the house just like that. Thank you for my cloth. Can you see it on me? I am so grateful. Don't be tired of saying that. And the more you do that, the more you will see results. The Lord will help us. Did anybody receive anything at all? Lift your right and say, thank you, Lord. Now, can I talk to the, to the singles one minute? Are you ready for something? 
Let me give you seven, seven things that must, be, that must guide you in relationship. Number one, make God the center of your life. Now, when I say talk to singles, how many, how many of you singles believe that what you are learning about marriage now is also very important for your life? All right. We didn't have opportunity to learn all this before stepping in. So, congratulations, you're almost a step ahead. And make God the center of your life. Ensure that the most important thing about your life is your relationship with God. Matthew 6, 33. Ensure that the most important reason for marriage is your relationship with God. Lord, I need to marry so I don't, I don't face distractions of temptations. Because he says it's better to marry than to burn. Father, I need to marry to serve you with focus. Make God the center of your life. The reason why you live and the reason why you are going to marry. Number two, avoid aimless association. What do I mean by that? If you are not interested in getting married to somebody, don't raise their hopes. It's wickedness. Don't waste people's time. When they see you hanging around a young girl all the time, they think that something is going on. And the right people won't come close. So give chance. Give space. Let the action sight be free. So that reaction can take place. Just don't let anybody waste your life. It is stupidity for a man to tell a girl, I am hungry right now, I, I don't even know what to eat. Is he your wife? And the girl say, oh, I, 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 I just made some dinner, and I'm like, you, you can, you, I can serve you some. He say, hey, should I come? He drove there. Like an atom that has no finishes eating the food, lives there, hardly can say thank you, and that is the end. Another time you might see branch there. In the in the mind of the girl, she is thinking that a husband potential has arrived, not knowing that it is an eater that arrived. And it arrived. <laughs> don't let them, don't, don't, let, don't let anybody waste your life and your time. Those who want to marry, don't behave like that. And if you have anything to say, say it on time. Make sense on time. If you are not ready to say anything, be observing from afar. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are interested in the girl, observe from afar. Find out information from the realm of the spirit. Find out information from anywhere you can around. And then when you are set, you make the move. And hit the nail on the head. Don't tell anybody, ah, sister, well done. Well done. I've been seeing you all this while. So I say, let me come and say, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done for what? For what? <laughs> and, then, and, and then the sister is waiting for more information. And sister, you see, God didn't tell women, love your husband. There is no commandment to say women love your husband. It's, it told only men, love your wife. For woman, it says submit. Somebody says, so is God saying women should hate your husband? No! Women don't have problem with love. It is men that have the problem of loving anybody. Women, love is natural. 
a day for this. They will love God with a passion. That is why when worship is going on, women cry more than men. They love God with passion. They can love a man and sell their house, sell everything. Sell jewelry, sell it. So the man is in problem. I can't leave him. can't leave him to suffer like that. They can love the devil too. That is why witches are more wicked than wizards. <laughs> witches are female witchcraft people. They don't, they don't have any problem with love. So you now see a joker coming your way. And then you just give him your heart effortlessly. You're trying to give him to break it. Am I communicating? Just call you. I just wanted to say, how are you? Just thought of you just now. So have a wonderful night. Bye. Tomorrow. I just thought of you this one. Stop thinking of me. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. <laughs> Take your seat, my person. This is very, very important because your heart can easily move. And that is why you must refuse to give your... Yes, men are moved by what they see. That is why women dressing badly is damage to men. That is, that is, that is continental missile. Back tight, chest tight. That is bomb walking. <laughs> you, just, you just ruined the man now. He look, 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 try to look away, he look again, look away, he look again. Now, he, he might go and do something on your account. That is, you, 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 you laid the foundation for his action later. So, men are moved, and that's why the devil uses the dress, the cloth, the fashion of generations to destroy men. Women are most moved by what they hear. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine. Just wanted to let you know your dress was very nice. Wow. <laughs> dress was fine. What next? I need to know the next thing. Am I coming to so, and then rescue yourself from aimless associating. When they think of that sister, is that boy? When they think of that brother, is that sister? Are you people in gossip? So don't, don't, don't set up yourself for ruin. That was number two. Avoid aimless association so you don't. Raise people's hopes and you don't waste people's time. Number three, or that number three, have a clear direction. What direction do you have for the future? What direction, what kind of future do you see? What direction, where would you be set to the land? Whether you are a man or a woman, have a clear direction. Woman, be... Have such a direction for your life that when the right man comes, you know. This is where I'm going and the person who is going in the similar direction has just arrived. The story I told you earlier on, the lady is living somewhere else, the man is living somewhere else. And he said, we have not agreed on what we are going to do, so I, don't, I cannot, it's not possible. A clear direction. Number four. Reveal vital information on time in courtship. Reveal vital information on time. Reveal it. What do I mean? Any information that is necessary for somebody to make up his mind 
whether you will marry or not, reveal it on time. Not after introduction, not after wedding, no, on time. Somebody married and realized that the wife was 10 years older than him or something. After they have married. She lied earlier on. He said, I don't mind if there was age, pro- age different, but I wish I had known from the beginning. I have had a situation where I had followed a, a, a pregnancy in time past from a previous relationship. And I did it, and it was a stupid pregnancy. They did me operation and removed one fallopian tube. The man must know before marriage. He must know. He must know. Because when you begin to you marry and maybe you started trusting God for children, then all of a sudden they go and do a scan and they say they see the only one fallopian tube. What happened? And then maybe later on after marriage you see surgery scar. What happened? Reveal it on time. Am I communicating? You have a child. Man. You did private practice. <laughs> and you have child from PP. Now you want to marry. Somebody who doesn't, doesn't know a man. She must know. I have to let her know. I have a child. See, somebody wanted to marry. And he came to the lady and told the lady, I want to marry you. The lady said, are you sure you want to marry me? I have two children. The man said, me too. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have two. So one, one. <laughs> so they married. That's how life should be. <laughs> Reveal that. Don't let it be. Introduction has happened. Then they got to know. Then they are now thinking of breaking the introduction. Or one day to the wedding. No. Or the wedding has happened. A man had relationship with his person to marry. He met her as a virgin. And he was the first person to know her. Even though it was wrong because it was done before marriage. So as far as he was concerned, he was the only person that knew her. But in between when they met and when they married, his close friend had also met with the woman. So even though he was the first, he wasn't the last. Before they married. And after they married, years later, he discovered that even though he was the first, before they married, his friend has met the woman. He went crazy. It's a sad story, one of the saddest stories I, have ever, I can ever tell. He went crazy, went out for any woman he can see. You, you deal with me like that, I deal with you too. Brought them home to their marriage bed. In the eyes of this woman, who do you think you can deceive? Who do you think you can dupe? Duped me to marry. You know what? He got HIV. Gave it to the woman. The two of them are dead. God forbid. God forbid. So that's the negative effects of that. People, when you, people think they are playing games, it catch up, catches up in the future. If whatever it is, if the man says, I won't marry you again, is that not better? Or the woman says, I won't marry, it's far better. Than stepping in on a very terrible foundation of deception, of lie, of assumption, and then you face terrible frustration. Please don't do that. Reveal vital information on time. Number five, watch out for danger signals. I said that last month briefly. In every relationship, most relationships, there are signals that show that something is wrong. If a man is quick-tempered, there is a way you are likely to know right before you marry. There are tendencies, if you, if you really fear God, God will show you things. In the dream, in the physical, you, your eyes open, you will be seeing him. He will lose control and they are behaving in ways that will amaze you. 
You see? If this man can act like this, now he will kill me. And you run for your life. Watch for danger signals. Number seven, watch out. Sorry, number six, watch out for unconditional love. What I mean is, let it be clear that this man is not after you because you have a car. This man is not after you because you have a well-paying job. Let it not be that this man is not after you because you are from a rich family. Search him out. Tell God to show you the unconditionality of this love. And finally, maintain foundational purity. Foundational purity. There is nothing as important as the purity of the bed. Hebrews 13, for marriage is honorable in all, the bed undefined. Watch out for foundational purity. Psalm 11 verse 3, if the, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Watch out for it. Having said all that, let me give you three keys to step in into your marital destiny. Number one, kingdom addiction. He's talking more to singles now, but everybody can have his kingdom addiction. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, husband things, wife things. All the things that other people look for shall look for you. I'd like you to give your heart and your life to God and say, Lord, take me, use me. Then ask God, single lady, single man, is there anything I am meant to be doing in your kingdom I'm not yet doing? I found who to marry on my duty post. As a young man, I preached in the medical student fellowship until they are wondering, is this a guest minister from which ministry? Not knowing I was a student on the campus. And then I ministered. And then up till my, I think 50 or 60, there are about, about 50, the Lord showed me that she will be my wife. At that time, a relationship was in, in her life, so to speak. And I had even prayed for her. I was president of Medical Students Fellowship. She was on the ESCO. I said, Lord, is this a person? While on my duty post. While other people were praying for who to marry, that didn't occur to me. It was God who drew my attention and said, I want to, I want to show you who to marry. Because as, as you proceed, I don't want you to be distracted. Hallelujah. So, uh, kingdom addiction. Lord, some of us, I, I know people here who found each other at their duty post. Ushering, doing his ushering work very well. Either he found another usher or he found somebody while he was... <laughs> I think that was your own case. You, 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 know, you normally used to usher in the front here. <laughs> this cameraman now, what, what is wrong with you? Did I say anything? <laughs> Hallelujah. On your, on your, on your, on your post of... <laughs> On your post of duty. Right? And, and fully committed. Kingdom addiction. If there is a way I'm meant to serve you, I'm not yet serving Lord. Show me. Kingdom addiction. Number two, clear vision. What do you see? What kind of marriage do you foresee? You see, as far as your eyes can see, I'll give to you. Don't agree to the lie of the devil that you will never get married. Refuse that people from your family don't get married on time. Refuse it. Let the scripture become your picture. 
Genesis 13, 14 and 15. As far as your eyes can see, all the land which you see, see your husband, see yourself in a marriage setting, see yourself joyfully, excitedly married, and let the picture remain. Pray while the picture is on your mind. Write down the picture of the kind of husband or wife you see and present it before God in excitement. And finally, you possess strong faith. Kingdom addition, clear addition, strong faith. You stand firm in faith. You are not shifting ground. Devil, whether you like it or not, I am marrying before November 2018. This is, um, this is May. Alright. I'm marrying before December 2018. And before the first week, later by December 2018, and before the, the month of May is out, I have located who? Devil, you have no option. And if your faith cannot take that, before the end of this year, I'm already in a comfortable relationship. Leading to marriage, you have no option. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith. He refused. He refused to be hopeless. He decided that whatever God said must come to pass. He refused to see God. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. He was strong in faith. And he began to praise God already for the husband that is coming. For the wife that is coming. He began to praise God. And what happened? It came to pass. Beloved, this night, I have just three prayers to pray. Prayer for God, wine, to multiply it in marriages. Prayer against anti-marital spell and the spirit of delay. And finally, any grace of God on our lives that is needed for you. Whether to marry or to stay married is going to be released tonight. Anybody bless say Amen. Stand on your feet in the shout of praise. Join the hands, your hands with somebody near you. I'll give you, just, give you just like five minutes and we shall be true. I think what we are going to do in the next meeting, maybe I will give a charge and she will do a preaching. And then the next one, she will do a charge and I will do a preaching. Because I'm seeing that two messages, two full messages is taking us so much time. And this is after nine. It's worth it. My intention is that we round off highest 8.30. That kind of time. Nigeria needs it. How come you are so long? Do you drink fertilizer? <laughs> lift up. Hold the hand of someone near you. And lift it up. Dr. Mr. Nature, you join me as we just pray this prayer. What a day. How many of you are excited? How many of you believe you received something today? I don't know of you, but I'm highly excited. Wow. Lift your hands together. Hold the hand of the person near you and lift it up. And let's appreciate God for tonight. Appreciate God for tonight. Appreciate God for tonight. Lift up your voice. Appreciate Him. Thank you for your word tonight. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the conclusion of all that we've heard tonight are these keys, the last three keys. And the first one is seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Husband things, wife things, marital harmony things will be added unto us. Seek you first the kingdom of God. You are here tonight and you want to say, Pastor, I want to turn my life over to God. I want to begin to seek God first. I want to make Him my priority. I don't want to live a life for the devil or for the enemy anymore. I want my life to be a picture and a reflection of Jesus Christ. Anywhere you are, pick your bag, pick your Bible, step forward here quickly. We'll pray with you first so that the blessings that are going to be declared can come upon you so that they can walk in your life. God bless you. I see them stepping out quickly. Come quickly so that we can uh, close before it is fasted. Father, we give you the praise. Pray this after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for this opportunity I have today to be called your child. 
I come to you today. I ask, Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Wash away my sins. Make me a new person. From today, I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on the devil. I will live to please you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that the hold of sin be broken off your life. Now, in Jesus' name. Those going out, just hold on one minute. Don't miss this important part. Lift up your two hands just one moment and ask God one thing. Out of these things you have heard, what do you want? Lord, give me a home that is godly. Father, give me the grace to live in accordance with what I just heard tonight. Whatever is your desire and whatever you want God to do regarding what you have just heard, lift your voice and speak it to God now. Everybody, what? let's go. Power of the Holy Ghost. Help, 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 help. From above, help is coming. Receive the help of God. In Jesus precious name. Now hold the hand of somebody near you and lift it up. Receive help. We're going to pray right now and just in case there is anything that is holding you maritally down. Maybe anti-marital spell. Maybe people don't marry on time from your family. Or they marry and the marriages don't work. Or they marry and, and there are different complications. Whatever it is, uh, we're going to pray. And whatever the, you might have not identified and you don't know about it, we'll pray. Let's pray and say this after me. Lord Jesus, today I come to you in the name of Jesus. I stand on the authority of your word. And I renounce and denounce every covenant I have entered into knowingly or unknowingly every anti-marital spell every spirit connection of spirit husband or spirit wife I divorce myself from you every spirit children I disconnect myself from you every spirit um, um, limitation I disconnect myself from you witchcraft covenant monitoring my life and destiny I disconnect myself from you I set myself free from you in the name of Jesus Today, I come against every character challenge in my life, around my life. Every family issues that constitutes a character challenge. I disconnect myself from you now. I set myself free now. In the name of Jesus, I declare I'm in the physical. I will marry in the physical. Every marine connection, I disconnect from you. I refuse that marine position. In the name of Jesus, every satanic hold of my life, I disconnect from you. And today, I receive wisdom. Wisdom for relationships. Wisdom in my home. Wisdom in my marriage. Wisdom as a husband. Wisdom as a, ma as a wife. Wisdom as a young man. Wisdom as a young lady. I receive establishment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We have done that. Now place your right hand on your forehead and leave your other hand up. I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart. And I speak to your life now. Every home that is passing through any crisis today it is over in the name of Jesus I prophesy upon the husbands and the men the grace to be a husband after the heart of God that grace is released upon you now in the name of Jesus I pray for the wife. The grace to be that kind of wife after the mind of God is released upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every anti marital spell, every spirit that says marriages should not work in your family and in your life and your destiny.
every spirit of delay preventing you from getting married or preventing you from staying married. This demonic power I address you by the authority of God on my life, by the secrets of the blood of Jesus. Your yoke is broken. Your yoke is broken. Your yoke is broken. I declare you are released to get married. You are released to get married. You are released to stay married. Between now and the next family convocation, you will have a testimony of marital restoration. You will have a testimony of supernatural marriage, supernatural relationship. Receive now! That's right, that's right, that's right. Every spirit husband, spirit wife, serpentine spirit. That's right. Letike babrata galite petika sakatata. I address you. Every anti-marital demon, every mask on your face, preventing you from being identified. I set them on fire. Every unclean spirit resisting you from staying married or getting married. I curse you demonic spirit. You are living at the cattle tree. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, shall go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Go. Let the In Jesus' name, every help Jehovah has given us that you need in your life is hereby released. Is hereby released. Is hereby released. So shall it be. And I take authority over every distraction in any home here. It is over forever. Before this conference is over, we will have a testimony. I like you to scream seven hallelujahs. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It is done. I know my God will turn it around. Stretch your two hands in front of you. I prophesy upon your hands. And I ask that your supplies, no devil will temper with. Every lack of scarcity or shortage in any family here is arrested. I call it dawn. Proceed, proceed with the dance as God turns around your life. The Lord bless and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Go and return back with marital testimony. In Jesus' name. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Receive the help of God. Let the case of the liberty 